Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, we're gonna set up and install one of these KH Guardians. All right, so thanks for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. If you are new to the channel, you may not know how much I love these devices, but I've run KH Guardians for a number of years now, and um, personally, I find them to be such a uh, critical piece of gear that I couldn't wait to get a new one to put on my dream reef tank. And the main reason why I went for a new one is whilst I've got a couple of other units now that are a number of years old and I've been working an absolute treat, the KH Guardian team continually develop new bits and pieces and they come out with all sorts of upgrades as the months and years go on. And when I looked at some of my units and looked at upgrading some of the bits and pieces, I figured it was going to be just easier and probably cheaper just to buy a brand new unit. And I figured what a great opportunity to go through the process with you guys on camera. So I've got myself a brand new KH Guardian here. Don't be disheartened by the uh, professional edition there. That's just, it's one of those quirks that's been with the KH Guardians all along. I should probably go back a step and talk about what a KH Guardian is before I talk about why I'm installing one. A KH Guardian is an automated alkalinity tester for your tank. What it does is it brings a sample of water in, it then drops reagent into that until it changes based on a pH level. It then determines from the pH level and from the number of drops of reagent what your tank alkalinity is. So uh, I figure we may as well get this unit unboxed and go about setting it up because uh, it's a complex bit of gear and there are a few steps that um, I see on the uh, Facebook group for KH Guardians all the time that people get caught up on. So let's do this one on screen together and uh, see how we go. It has been a few years, so bear with me. All right, let's rip it open. Ignore the uh, professional edition thing on the box there. It's just something, one of these little quirks that has been there with KH Guardian from the start. We'll get past that. We'll take the uh, box sheet cover off and uh, rip open this unit. Now, super, super important. Step one, you'll notice every one of the boxes has this at the front. It tells you where to download the manual. Guys, if you're setting one of these up, grab the manual. If you're expecting to purchase one and you know you're getting it in a week or a month's time, go to the website, download the manual, read it from start to finish first. It's gonna answer so many of your questions. I think probably 70% of the questions I see on the uh, KH Guardian Facebook group can be answered in the manual. So read the manual. All right, some bubble wrap. The, uh, well, I guess it's bubble wrap. The uh, KH Guardian itself, pretty crazy looking bit of gear. Got a uh, packet of reagent. We will set that up soon. We have a power lead. We have a power pack. We have a connector for the screen to the unit. We have some check valves. We have some silicon hosing. And down in here, we have a pH probe that you need to be very careful with. And there, I believe there is also something else. Here we are. I think that's it now a uh, backup magnetic stirrer. These guys, they've got a little little Teflon stir bar inside the chamber of these things. And when they used to get shipped, that stir bar used to always fall out. The number of people I had that bought a uh, new KH Guardian didn't work. And then um, I tell them to check inside the chamber for the little stir bar. It had often fallen out. They now ship with a spare one in this big packaging so that it's less likely to get lost. Um, good improvement, good work, uh, Dr. Bridge and KH Guardian team. All right, let's get all the stuff we don't need out of the way. Now I'll run you through some of the bits and pieces that I feel you need to have ready for your KH Guardian that doesn't come in the kit. First up, you're gonna need some kitchen scales. You need this to be able to measure out your reagent mix because we're gonna mix 1500 grams of water with the reagent packet. It's not 1500 milliliters, it's 1500 grams. It is important, don't ask me why, but it is. I've also got a little container, one that I'll use for an alkalinity solution, one that I'll use that one's gonna be alkalinity, that one's gonna be reagent, just somewhere to store them. I personally also highly recommend some sort of mounting solution, whether you wanna DIY something, you wanna 3D print the files available on the website, or you wanna buy something off the shelf, somewhere to mount your KH Guardian is always a good idea. I personally also recommend some PH4 and PH7 calibration fluid. I know the new units do come with a probe pre-calibrated, however, always handy to have some of this stuff on hand. I've got a little bit of hose here. I think it's about three eighths in size. I like to hook this onto the drain for the chamber just in case something goes wrong and your uh, unit overfills. You wanna be able to direct that wastewater out exactly where you want it rather than just having it overflow. The unit has a little drain port on it. 
plug some hose onto it, makes life much easier. And last but not least, um, this is a question that comes up quite often, the KH Guardian is not Wi-Fi, it is Ethernet only. So I've got a little Wi-Fi adapter here. This is one I've used on previous KH Guardian, so it's already configured for me, but basically all it does is it takes in my Wi-Fi signal and gives me an Ethernet port out so that uh, the KH Guardian thinks it's hardwired to my network when in fact it's actually Wi-Fi. I could do a whole separate video on these things. I recommend you go down to your local technology place, tell them what you need to do, tell them you have a device that only has an ethernet connection and you're wanting to connect it via Wi-Fi, unless of course you can run an ethernet cable. I've also Jimmy rigged up a little uh, power adapter here. This is uh, literally a, a cigarette adapter to a USB cable, mainly because uh, the uh, KH Guardian has a, a 12 volt output designed specifically for Wi-Fi adapters, so I've taken the 12 volt signal, put it into a cigarette adapter, which has given me a USB out because this unit runs on five volts. That's all the bits and pieces you need, so I figure we may as well get into it. All right, so one of the first steps you need to do is to mix up your reagent, and this is one thing that does generate a lot of questions. Now, first of all, you need to put your container on a kitchen scale and make sure you've teared it out. That means that when the, the container is on the scale, the scales are reading zero because we want to measure 1500 grams of RODI water. We don't want to measure what the container is and then we'll work all that out. It's much easier if you're just measuring the water. Once you've got 1500 grams of RODI water, you can add your reagent to that. Give it a bit of a stir and it's good to go. All right, next up is the physical connections to the hoses themselves. There are five of these. You have an alkalinity in with an alkalinity out. You have a reagent in, you have a waste out, and of course you have a water sample in. Follow all the instructions. I personally like to use a couple of extra check valves. I find it easier to connect the hoses that way. Very, very straightforward. All right, I think I've got uh, all my connections set up where they need to be. And uh, I'll just run you through them now. On the side, I'll show you this uh, delightfully busy section here, but I've got uh, power coming out of the KH Guardian here. That goes into my uh, crazy Frankenstein power adapter, which sends a USB power up to my adapter. And of course I've got the ethernet cable coming out of my Wi-Fi adapter down and into my uh, ethernet port. The other connection here is to go to the uh, screen, which uses an ethernet port as well. And that pretty much wraps up that side. Obviously my power will plug in up here. To spin around to the other side, well, just as we do, you can see I've got uh, my pH probe here and I've followed the instructions to make sure I've got that pH probe installed at the height that it needs to be. I will cross check that when I put the unit in place, but uh, for now it's in and it's safe. You wanna make sure you're uh, very careful handling the pH probe because they can uh, break quite easily. Out this side, I have uh, all of my hoses that I've got to hook up now. This one here is my uh, overflow drain hose, which will probably just sit out here. I might put a little elbow on that, so it just goes back down into the sump, should something go wrong. And then you'll notice on these ones, and I'll try and get the camera to pan on it for you. You see uh, SW in, that's a salt water in. I've got my check valve pointing the way that that water's gonna to allow to go in, but not back out. So salt water in salt water out that one's actually going to go to my uh, skimmer cup and you notice that it, the uh, pointed side of the check valve is pointing that way because the salt water is going to come out over here i've then got a uh, ss in which is our alkalinity in again with the uh, check valve pointing in this one here is our ss out otherwise known as alkalinity out so that one's going to run off to a point in my sump and then uh, last but not least, the one that's got the uh, tag right down in there, so if we can get it, KRS, that's our reagent line. And they're connecting up to these uh, little adapters I made to hook up to John Guest because um, I'll use some uh, little Tupperware containers which uh, you will have seen me measure the reagent out in. So I'm just gonna set this holder in a uh, somewhat temporary place for the time being, just so I can get good access to the unit to make sure that um, I can program it. And, do everything I need to do before I go mounting it up somewhere crazy in the uh, sump. But uh, I think we're pretty well ready now to set it up and uh, see how we go. All right, we've got everything in place here. Now the alkalinity is over to the side there. You can't quite see on camera. We've got the reagent next to it. I've then got the unit with all its connections all in place. I'm gonna power it up for the first time now. Now, 
Now, what we see on screen is going to be important to get access to this unit. We see the IP address there. So that's what I'm going to jump on my computer and put in now. All right. Now, you see one thing that's super important here is the semicolon and the 8090. That's the port number that showed there. So if I put that in, it should take me to the login page. You can even hear the uh, KH Guardian there beeping in the background. Now the default password is an admin with a capital A. All right, now we've got to the uh, control panel of the KH Guardian. Now you can control some of the pumps here. First thing I want to do is just change a couple of settings here. So I'm going to jump into system setup. All right, the first thing is the check interval of every four hours, 240 minutes. I'm just going to change that to 120 for every two hours. I'm going to leave these settings all the same, but I do want to change the KH auto correction. I want to set that to 7.5. I want the total volume of the tank to be set to 1400 liters. I'm going to leave all of these other things the same. I'm going to turn the uh, sound off. I don't want a beeping every time. Uh, let's have a look port, everything else there is okay. I'm gonna save that. Now the unit's just gonna reboot, which you can see over there on the uh, screen of the KH Guardian, which means this page will actually not become active anymore, but that's all right. Once that's rebooted, we should be able to go back to that load page again. We'll just give it a second. We should be pretty right now. Okay, we can log back in. I'd also highly recommend changing the password from that default password, particularly if you're going to open it up to the outside world. Now, I have been told that you can actually just do the get DKH at this point in time. And with the current software, it'll actually run all the way through and pull all the things in. But what I like to do is to do a salt water tube degas. So I'll click that. And as you can see, that turns on the pump, which brings the salt water into the tank. I'll just pan the camera a little bit to the side. See if we can see that water coming in. Here it comes. Pretty soon we should see a full chamber. Okay, so that has brought, it's primed that line for the salt water. What I'm gonna do now is click on the purge chamber and we're just gonna purge that water out of that line. We should see, if I pan across to the side here, it might be hard to see on camera, but uh, you can just see I've put that into the skimmer cup and that is dripping in. So my waste from the KH Guardian is gonna go into my skimmer cup. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how you have to do it, but that is how I've done it. All right, so our salt water line is purged. Our uh, Purge chamber line is good. The next thing we need to do is to K get the reagent purged. So, uh, well, we should also do test KH doser. I'm just gonna click on that. We'll get uh, the alkalinity solution coming in and then out again. You can see the line shaking there, the fluid starting to go in. And then eventually over here, as I bump the camera, <laughs> we're actually getting KH uh, coming. I'll just move it across here. I've got the outlet coming over into one of my dosing lines here. And we've just got some of that coming out there already. So that one is all set, ready to go. Next up, we need to do the KSD gas. Now this can take a little while. I'm gonna click that now. That's just purging the chamber first. All right, and what we need to keep an eye out for now, I'll try and get in close without bumping the camera. We've got this pump here turning around, bringing reagent in. And eventually we should see a red light flashing in here as the drops go down. It will take a little while because it's a very, very slow pump. It's not like these big ones here that are made to bring in milliliters at a time. This dosing pump here is designed to bring in a drop at a time. So it does take a second. And I should also point out that in the instructions, like I said to follow, you should actually prime that line by drawing uh, the fluid through with the syringe. In this instance, I haven't done that because I wanted to show you how long it does take because if you do ignore that instruction, it does take some time. But uh, we're just gonna forge ahead, see how long it takes to go. 
just by doing the uh, purging of KS line. Now, my line is quite short. Obviously, the longer it is, the longer it's going to take. You've got to bear in mind that, um, like I said, we are talking about a drop, uh, about a drop every second or two. So it's going to take a little while. So uh, grab a drink and uh, let it run. You can actually just start to see reagent line there slowly making its way across. It's very, very slow, but it is getting there. Probably only another couple minutes and that line will be purged. And through the magic of YouTube, I have sped this part of the footage up for you, but uh, worth keeping in mind, my tube is about 30 centimeters long and this took about 10 minutes to prime. All right, now you can see we're starting to get drops coming through here. You'll see the red light pop on as my dog goes off at a uh, bird in the backyard, but you can see the red light flashing when we're seeing drops coming through here. That tells us our reagent line is purged. Now, you want to let that run just for a second longer because uh, you want to make sure you've got any air out of the system there and make sure it's well purged because the system counting those drops is very, very important. We want to make sure that we're counting each and every drop precisely. And uh, that's, again, what that LED there is to do. So now that I've seen the uh, drips come through at a consistent rate, I'm going to hit, uh, let me have a look on the screen. We hit reset. And that will stop that there. All right, we should be ready to run our first get DKH test. Now, bear in mind that it will take a good half dozen or so tests for the system to actually get to a, an established rate and actually give you a true result. But uh, let's run through the process now. All right, here it goes. You can see the system's just purging the reagent line. Okay, now it's clearing out the chamber which our chamber should be fairly empty because uh, we've only got a couple of drops of reagent in there, but it will do this every test just to make sure the chamber is completely empty. And when I'm talking about the chamber, I am talking about uh, this little black section down here where our pH probe sits. Now, I probably do need to lower my pH probe a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can do that now while it's running. Nope, that's as far as it wants to sit, so we'll leave it there for now. The tank or the chamber is now filling up with salt water and it's counting the number of steps that it takes to fill that. It does that as a safety measure in case that number gets larger. It tells you either that pump needs cleaning or the sensor is not seeing when the chamber's full. All right, so we've actually got a little pH reading here now telling us that the pH probe is reading 7.1, which 7.0. It's obviously still a little bit of acid in the chamber, so it's, uh, it's gonna clear that out again and then it'll draw in another batch of salt water. You can actually adjust the number of times it washes the chamber in the settings. I've got it set to the default settings right now. All right, we should draw some fresh salt water in again. The shorter you can keep your salt water in line, which is my one here, the better. It's just gonna mean uh, you're not testing water that's been in the line for the last couple of hours. You're testing water that's fresh out of your tank. All right, now we should start testing. Little countdown, or count up, I should say. All right, it's gonna start counting those drops of reagent. Whilst measuring the pH, it'll check to see when it reaches its desired pH level, and it will have counted the drops of reagent to tell us the number of alkalinity from there. You can actually see the live alkalinity reading going up as it's testing. I'm also pleased to say that the latest version of the KH Guardians, the uh, reagent pump used to be so, so noisy and you could hear it from outside of your cabinet, whereas uh, they've made it much quieter on these new models, which is amazing. It's gonna keep my uh, wife much, much happier. You see every drop of reagent, we're going up about 0 0.09, 0 0.1 of a uh, DKH. And it'll just keep counting until it reaches that pH level that it's set at. Bear in mind again that this is the first test this unit's ever done and it's gonna take a good five or six runs to flush it through the system and then we can dial in the settings to get it super accurate from there. But we'll let it do, let it do its thing for a couple of runs and uh, go from there. I did perform a manual alkalinity test on this tank just to see where the KH Guardian should get us to, again, after a few tests. Currently, my alkalinity is about 7.1, 7.2 in this tank. so. We'll see where the uh, KH Guardian reports to after a couple tests and see if we can get it to line up. 
All right, the alkalinity is obviously getting a little bit closer to the set point because you notice the uh, KH Guardian is now displaying A. It can then go to B and sometimes occasionally go to C when it's nearing the result. You can see our current alkalinity is reading a little bit low, not unusual on the first test, nothing to panic about just yet. We'll let it do a couple tests before we uh, bed down on a value and then adjust if we need to. All right, it's finally finished doing its first ever test and what it's doing now, it's just emptying the chamber. So it's pumping all of that uh, water and reagent out of that plastic chamber and pumping it out into my skimmer cup. Then it'll pump in some fresh salt water just to give it a bit of a rinse out. It'll then pump that out again as well. The AL123 up there, that's the stir bar. So it's actually giving a bit of a swish inside that cup. Now it's rinsing it out again. All right, it's done a few tests now to bed in. You can see we're now at 7.13, which is uh, right where I was getting from my manual test. So I'm happy that we've got some good consistent results now and it's testing where it should be. So I can pretty well just leave the unit to do its thing now. But uh, there is one last little party trick that I like to hook up with these things. I won't go into the full details here because it is a little bit nerdy and it does take a little bit of coding, but uh, I do like to be able to go, hey Siri, what's my alkalinity? Is 7.13. That's pretty cool. I think you can see it matches what's on the screen here. It saves me having to dive into the into the uh, cabinet area of my tank, but also I can do that from anywhere in the world, which does require you to set up a dynamic DNS service to basically make your uh, internal network available externally. There's a bit into it, but uh, if you are interested, pop onto the uh, KH Guardian Facebook group, and I can go into the details there. All right, guys, there you have it. That's the setup and installation of the KH Guardian. Now, these guys are selling in Australian local fish shops for about a thousand bucks each, which for something that's completely standalone, it does a really accurate job. Uh, it's very serviceable. It's got a great community online. Um, you can upgrade the bits, you can get replacement parts. Like I said, it just, it ticks all the boxes for me. It doesn't require a controller. It's not like some of the other alternatives out there that require you to have an Apex or a, a GHL. This bad boy stands alone on its own two feet, tests your alkalinity as frequently as you want, doses your alkalinity to make sure that you keep it at that set level. What more could one want? Anyway, guys, I'll wrap it up with that. If you have any questions for myself on the KH Guardian, be sure to pop it in the comment section down below. As always, I respond to each and every one of those comments. So if you wanna get hold of me, that is the best place. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content like this in future, be sure to subscribe by that uh, little button down there in the corner. That'll make sure you get notified every time I release a new video. Till next time, guys, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.